Hello, hello, this is Irina Soga Talks. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today again. Uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, I will encourage you to subscribe to YouTube channel just to stay on top of things that we're discussing here on Soga Talks. Follow us on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and not just follow, okay? We want your engagement, we want your opinion, and want your comments. That's how those flat platforms work. But most importantly, we really want to hear if these topics that we're discussing, is it resonating? If you have something to add to the fabulous points that my esteemed guests are making. So quick uh, jump into the show. I am extremely the privilege today. Mike Flash is with me today. Mike, how are you? Thank you, Irene. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm good today. Thank you very much. And I hope you as well. I'm doing fantastic. You know, what gives me a big boost in my life, okay? We're all finding motivation. We're all finding like good things to do to ourselves before we help others. You know, my motivation is really meeting and speaking with brilliant, smart, fascinating people who are somewhat familiar with going on in tech world. And that what gives me extreme pleasure and, and very educational sessions with leaders like yourself, Mike. So I'm going to thank you again for taking your time in your very busy schedule. So my let's pleasure. jump. <laughs> Let's jump quickly into, all right, digital growth, digital transformation, everything digital. Mm -hmm. To me, it's already cliche, okay? So many people out there, professionals, young mm -hmm. college people, mid-career people, people close mm -hmm. to retirement, they seem to understand what it means, and yet so much frustration going on. So, Mike, if we can probably uh, what enlighten enlighten the audience today what do you see is happening i mean some major trends or i would say your observation in digital technology and mm. what companies and leaders need to know about it right now mm. okay that's a good question but it's also a complex question it's not easy to answer that's the so goal. That's the goal. Let's uh, delve into the details. It's e easier to explain than just scratching the surface. Because as you know, we have so many buzzwords out there. And I'm not a friend of these buzzwords. We often talk about the same issue or the same topic, but we have completely different meanings. So if we are be able to give it uh or bring in more insights today i'm very happy so uh you named it digital growth i would separate digital growth um into two areas so digital growth from one point of view is for me when technology helps um, to drive digital growth, for example, to streamline processes uh, in sales, marketing, for example, or business development. This equals for me digitalization. On the other hand, uh, digital growth means when you use a technology and you invent or create an entire new business model that equals for me digital business transformation. And as you can see, these simple two uh, key terms or key words are often used uh, interchangeably and someone talks yeah we want to digitalize our company and uh, another says hey now we we are on a digital transformation project but what does it really mean um, they have a different understanding so to make this clear there is a big difference from my point of view between digitalization means for me streamlining processes to keep it simple and digital transformation where you uh, create entire new business models and drive growth by doing that. Tech trends, okay? So can mm -hmm. you name those that you're seeing prevalent right now? I probably mm -hmm. can guess a few myself, but I want to hear your opinion on it first. Okay, yeah. So as you know, the list is very, very long. Um, we have so many emergent technologies on the table, including the buzzwords, of course. So um, what I'm really excited about is, of course, let me give you three uh, key technologies, is, of course, uh, artificial intelligence. This is clear, um, and uh, we all know at the moment this generative AI and, of course, chat GPT uh, as, the, as the key solution or key tool. 
Um, but this is not what I'm currently excited about so much. I'm more excited about um, when it comes to uh, a combination, a, com a combination, for example, of AI and IoT. And this means, for example, um, let's say AI plus blockchain in combination or combined uh, with an IoT solution. Because on that, or from, from this, or in this area, let's call it this, uh, this way, in this area, you have uh, the possibility to, for example, analyze uh, large data sets through uh, or by the uh, artificial intelligence. And on the other hand, you have uh, the blockchain technology that secures transaction, uh, transactional processes. And combined with each other, you will be able to create these entire new business models and uh, this is for me an exciting topic beyond generative uh, AI. Another key technology for me is, um, or the, the area is digital twins and cognitive digital twins. And again, we have, uh, we have again this combi uh, combined uh, solution or a combination of different uh, technologies. For example, imagine a digital twin that is a, comp uh, yeah, a complete, uh, how can I explain this? Uh, a virtual replica that runs autonomously, and by the use of, and this digital twin uses AI to for the decision making. So all of a the sudden, this uh, digital twin is be able to simulate um, assets, machines, and processes in real time. And this is for me very fascinating because you get insights from this uh, application that you couldn't get before, for example. And this leads me to the third one. The third one is for me real-time computing or edge computing. You can name it like that. And look, uh, across the world, we have, or we can say cloud is the base in IT infrastructure. Of course, I know uh, a couple of countries and especially Germany, where uh, most of the CIOs want to use, still want to use uh, on-premise systems, but they are getting more open now and they say, okay, we have to move to the cloud as well. Otherwise we cannot use a certain type of technology. It's not possible with uh, on-premise systems or it's very difficult to use them. So if we take this as a base and we put, again, 5G plus IoT uh, together in such an environment, mm, we are be able to receive or the, the, the case could deliver real-time data insights. And these real-time data insights could lead to a complete new consumer experience or customer experience, how you want to name it. Because... Again, think about it. you are sitting in a car and these real-time data from IoT sensors and it's analyzed in real time. All of a sudden you get an offer out or in a car or in, a, in an elevator, wherever you, you want to use this, or even in a factory or in a, in a showroom. It doesn't matter. All of a sudden we can create a customer or a user experience that uh, wasn't be able before. And this is what I mean. Um, in the end, it's always about value creation and uh, by value creation i mean people need to ask decision makers need to ask uh, companies need to ask themselves where we are where we want to go and how can we create uh, yeah, the the biggest impact regarding uh, value creation don't jump on any train this is what I don't like and what I don't see because in this world full of buzzwords, oh, we have to go here, we have to go there. It's, just, it's not the case. Understand what is, your, uh, what is your current position, where do you want to go? And then take the decision based on that. And AI, I can help you, but uh, as you can see, it's more common sense uh, to take the right decision. You mentioned very interesting element to it all, okay? You mentioned data. 
All right, all the sensors, all the technology we have now that, uh, hey, uh, data coming from different sources, right? Company learning mm -hmm. how to monetize, right? Mm -hmm. All the data insights. Mm -hmm. But I'm always asking my questions because I am a person of action, all right? And just consuming the data, we know it's hurting the business, it's spending resources where they don't need to spend them, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you about some of these huge pains out there, okay? Just sitting on all that data, right? And thinking I'm, I'm data driven and I'm doing all mm -hmm. the right things. At the same time, right? How about data to action? What kind of, again, processes, what kind of ecosystem every company needs to think about that you really utilizing because everyone's short on resources now, short on budgets, right? Mm -hmm. How do you optimize that really sweet spot for your company, for your business, where mm -hmm. you take data into account, but hey, you're taking action with it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I absolutely agree. And this is uh, one of the the biggest issues out there. Um, you named it already. We have on on the other side. We have the pressure. Yeah, we have the pressure. We have. Uh, I don't like this word, but again, we have to talk about it. We have the poly crisis uh, out there. Inflation, energy issues uh, and so on on the other hand uh, we have uh, as well the leaders and their teams because they have to deliver results mm -hmm. because a company has to be profitable this is still the case even in 2023 uh, and this won't change in, in the near in the near future so um as, if i understand you right or and i stood you right in this case Mm, what I see is that most companies have, uh, let's call it a big amount of, uh, of data, but they cannot monetize it or they cannot use it in the right way. And let me, let me give you a simple example. Um, and don't go to the large or technology-driven companies. Let's go into a traditional branch or to a traditional sector, to a medium-sized company, around uh, 300 to 400 stuff. So they had, uh, let's keep it simple, they had a CRM system, for example, where they collected, it was around 40 or 45,000 uh, contacts. <laughs> and of course, uh, the majority of these contacts were, let's call it dead, not the people were dead or the contacts were dead, but nobody used this amount of data. No, nobody was using that. So we brought in the technology and said, hey, guys, you're potentially working with 10% of these data to make your business. So what is about uh, the other 90%? So, and we used the technology, uh, AI-driven, and the, the these technology were... Um, not filtering, but um, let's see it, analyzing uh, these 90% of the data. And to make a long story short, we will be able within eight weeks to identify from these dead contacts uh, 2 million of additional opportunities, business opportunities. And this is for a, a medium-sized company. Uh, an extra sales, you won't miss. Here we go. What's the advice? What's the advice? Because I'm sure every company out there, I can make that statement, okay? Every company out there really working with what's working for them. And it's 10%, 5%. It's really tiny percent of what they really own, mm -hmm. all right? So mm -hmm. how do you think, you know, the mind change need to think? Because again, they don't have time, right? It's, uh, what is it? The work day yeah. is what it is, right? Yeah. So why, why would you encourage people to look beyond what's familiar? Because everyone knows their business, I hope, well, right? <laughs> but beyond what they're not tapping into right now, like in your example, what's the advice? How mm -hmm. can they kind of, yeah, yeah, start leveraging that data? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question. Of course, it, you, you cannot uh, give a general answer because it depends on the current situation of, yeah. of each company. But um, my experience is, and this is what I see across the globe, mm -hmm. um, I see still a lot of fear. I see still a lot of fear uh, within the companies and especially in the leadership uh, team. Uh, and my experience or my yeah yeah gives me two major reasons for that um on the one hand of course you named it already it is this 
pressure, uh, providing or delivering results. And uh, of course, I can understand this. If you're in such a situation, for example, and you have uh, you are quarterly driven, uh, especially when you're at the public market, but even <laughs> when you're in a private market, you are uh, quarterly driven and you have to deliver results uh, as a leader. You don't want uh, to do any mistake. Uh, I can understand this from this point of view. On the other hand, it is a very uh, short-term thinking because uh, postponing all these uh, innovation and uh, streamlining process or even digital business transfer as a inventing or creating entire new business models, you cannot postpone this every time. And I would love to give you a simple example by, uh, by that. In 2017 or 2018, the people, the leaders where I was in the discussion with, gave me the argument, uh, especially from traditional um, sectors, oh, Mike, yes, you are absolutely right. We should do this, but... And then the but was, we have to focus on our clients first. We have to deliver our products. We have to deliver our service. And I said, yes, <laughs> don't worry. This shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be canceled. Yeah. We have to do one thing. And at the same time, we have to do the other thing as well. Of course, uh, this argument uh, at that time was, let's call it valid. And now 2020 or even 2023, they say, oh, no, Mike, we have to postpone this or that thing because now we have this poly crisis on the table and we have to focus again on our customers and, 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 and. Sorry, these are for me excuses. And these are for me uh, simply called fear because... What I see between the lines is not so much about, yeah, we have to focus on the clients or the, the customers. Every company has to focus on the customer because we, we solve a problem for, for our customers. And this is the reason why we exist as a company. So thinking a little bit further and getting away from this short-term thinking, thinking in the mid and long term, the future of the company, and this means also attracting the right talent to get it into the company um, to make it future ready, um, it's not possible to postpone every time and to use all the time the argument you will have to focus on the customer first or we have this challenge in the, our framework conditions or that challenge. I'm sorry. Uh, this will last until the end of my days, <laughs> until the end of your days. I'm sorry, this is for me. It just <laughs> So true, so true. <laughs> question from another spectrum of thinking okay yes, so we're talking about leaders who kind of reluctant to change and we get it you know you and i we've been mm -hmm. around the industry we know how hard it is to start something new because you have responsibility mm -hmm. right i, I sympathize mm -hmm. with them no questions right mm -hmm. now question from other side of the spectrum how often because i've seen it a lot okay when top leaders business leaders technology leaders became fascinated with particular technology Okay, mm -hmm. they bring into organization and they saying, no matter what we did yesterday, this is our savior. Okay, we're gonna mm -hmm. implement. Remember, it used to be relational databases a million years ago, it used to be what is it, internet, uh, e commerce, blockchain, mm -hmm. not so mm -hmm. long ago, AI mm -hmm. now, AI for a long time now, right? How yeah. many we saw these shiny faces of the leaders saying, guys. This is what we're going to do. Stop the rest of what you're doing, more or less, right? And that's going to save us. And they are enthusiastic. They have budgets. They're mm -hmm. putting money into it, mm -hmm. right? We know what mm -hmm. comes after that, right? Pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. where is this? Where is this common sense in a way? Because leader, we want leaders to be excited, right? We want leaders to be aware of what's possible, right? All mm -hmm. the technology trends mm -hmm. we're discussing, that's the reason, mm -hmm. right? We want them mm -hmm. to know what mm -hmm. they can do. But mm -hmm. question the fact that you can do it, it doesn't mean that you should do it. So what's your take mm -hmm. on it? Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And uh, you named or you mentioned uh, two important keywords. Uh, one was responsibility. Uh, and the other was uh, getting excited. Um, 
there's an interesting fact again let me let me give you an example uh, from my experience again um what you've illustrated is exactly what uh, a lot of leaders are aiming for and uh, a few of them take action because it's easier to talk about then uh, move forward. Yeah? So talk the talk instead of walk the walk. We know this. <laughs> and uh, don't worry, it's, it's not easy. Yeah? Uh, so, uh, to know you have to go on doesn't mean it's easier or it makes it easier to have, oh, no, I'm, I'm start going. Yeah? This, uh, this is difficult, yes. Uh, I understand this. But on the other hand, always keep in mind, think a little bit beyond your own plate, beyond your own uh, environment. What does it mean to get stuck? What does it mean to postpone every time? So getting excited mean as well, I cannot do this alone. And responsibility means I have to build or rebuild or yeah, a, a team, a new team and bring the right people together. And these people as a leader, I have to give uh, to provide room or space uh, freedom where they can create something, where they can bring their knowledge in, their, 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 their excitement in. And this means I'm responsible as the leader for the overall ongoing part of the project or part of the company. That's not the question, but I have also to, uh, but I need to give also this responsibility to my team and to trust my team. And there is a huge gap at the moment. Uh, again, against this background from poly crisis, uh, pressure, and all these uh, things around that makes business uh, not easy uh, in nowadays. But again, how do you want to move the whole company further? You cannot sing in your own little world. And this means being responsible means as well um, giving responsibility away to your team, trust your team and move it together further and guide them to the, uh, to the right direction or to the goal or to the objective, however you want to call this. And last but not least, what you meant by getting excited. Um, for me, this is simply in, uh, yeah, lead by example. Uh, this is what I always see the people talk and talk and talk and talk. And then they say, yeah, we have to do this and that. Yeah. And then the meeting uh, lasts uh, four hours or the whole day. And then we go, oh, let's go into the weekend on a Monday. Uh, we do business as usual. And I said, are you kidding? <laughs> what kind of, sorry, rubbish is that? This was waste of time here today. Yeah. Uh, Four hours or maybe the whole day. Yeah, you got a good feeling. Uh, you have, maybe you got a fantastic weekend in the aftermath. But so what? What should happen now? Huh? Do you really think that your company uh, or your staff or uh, your shareholder, whatever, move uh, actually further from next Monday onwards by doing what? Nothing. And this is my experience out there and i don't want to paint such a bad picture <laughs> don't worry of no, course this is just human need... behavior this is so human yeah. and hey in my life i experienced one on monday people don't even remember genuinely okay what happened on thursday <laughs> and god forbid wednesday before so <laughs> that's so human Good. that's why Good. responsibility of those leaders really driving yeah. the agenda right you don't have to be genius Absolutely. and understand everything what's going on around you but you really have to have that engine, all right, that drives Absolutely, yeah. and progress it forward. Absolutely. But what I meant as well, I don't mean it in a bad way. Yeah, it mm -hmm. sounds, I don't want that uh, it sounds cynical or something like that because it is quite the contrary. I have a complete understanding for the situation, but I, what I want to illustrate is that it doesn't make any sense to wait any longer with things or to postpone it in the future because, again, uh, the mountain gets higher and higher and higher. And then in the end, what do you think? You go over it simply or you go uh, on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side. It's not possible because the mountain... A technology is... depth, there is this even term, you know, for exactly this. I mean, you're acquiring, you're acquiring problems as you go when you don't act. Mm. 
and sometimes inaction is the worst enemy, right? Right. So I'm so happy we're discussing that very human element. Okay, it all the changes in technology. What about yeah. skills? Okay, I ask my guests a lot to comment. What you see really, really current today in 2023? Skills, roles, because people are worried. Okay, from like every spectrum in the workplace, mm-hmm. right? The young mm-hmm. professionals find trying to find the work, right? Those in mm-hmm. mid careers and so on and so forth. So, how do you think this digital age? Okay, uh, companies who are more conservative, right? I guess they think they're okay. Yeah right? The skills they have, but yet they're being pushed by competition. So in terms of stay competitive for people in the marketplace today, future Mm -hmm. of work, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of skills you see that will help people to to move to the next level? Mm -hmm. Ah, Yeah, this is a good question, but uh, I would love to turn it a little bit around uh, into a a different direction. So Mm -hmm. if I would uh, be an HR guy, I would say, okay, you have to do X, Y, that. This is not what um, I want to talk about. I want to give a little bit more information um, for for the audience between the lines. And of course, you can you can learn every skill you want, um, and there are a lot of skills that are that are useful uh, in 2023 and within the next five years. But I would like to encourage the people to how can I phrase this? I would say use more common common sense. Yeah, even in the age of uh, digital technology, and especially against this worldwide discussion about uh, artificial intelligence, hey, use common sense. And one advice I would like to give is, as an employee, for example, who's searching for uh, the next uh, employer or for the next company uh, he or she wants to work for, is, uh, of course, you have a set of skills. This is fantastic. But ask yourself, can you bring these skills or can you implement these skills into the company in the best way you can achieve your own goals? means if you're really innovative and you want to drive something further and you got to or you're in front of an HR person that is really conservative and the company has a culture that is really conservative, hey, you can have the best skills in the world you will get frustrated. So, and this is a gut feeling. This is not so much about artificial intelligence. You sit in that interview assessment center and you really need to ask yourself, do I really want to work here? Yes or no. Can I really move things further than the way I want? Can I really bring in my personality? These are the questions that are more driven by common sense than artificial intelligence from my point of view. This is fantastic. You know what? We didn't talk about chat GPT for the reason today, right? Or any other generative <laughs> AI. But what you're bringing to the table, Mike, is much more valuable at this point because absolutely I'm with you. We're like really, really <laughs> like-minded uh, professionals out there. Um, it is about our intuition, okay? It's about what who we are are and who want to be and i talk to a lot of younger people and other Mm -hmm. people my age and right right a lot of professionals out there saying hey do you really want to work for the company that don't want Mm -hmm. you that's kind of you know Mm -hmm. you have to have a sense is this a good environment for me just be a little more selfish because we Mm -hmm. used to kind of right of course thinking that interview it's an exam you have to pass it or you fail it all right. And it's, of course, mm-hmm. on human level, it's very discouraging when there's no immediate success or something like that. Right. But what you bring up, Mike, to this thinking, we call it common sense, common, you know, common for certain yeah. groups of people. Right. But just want to remind out if people who are listening to watching us, who are open to work mm-hmm. right now, who are looking for their next projects, just think about what will make you happy with like minded people. All right. They will sense mm-hmm. that you are the right person. OK, it's not AI who is making this decision, thankfully, not just yet. All right. Yep. You have to connect. And I have uh, so many happy stories knowing that a person come to interview and all of a sudden they just funding the same school they went to yeah. with interviewer. Some yeah. uncommon I don't discoveries that break that ice. 
and all these skills you have to possess, no questions, right? Mm -hmm. But you bring it in context for people who kind of know you better, who can trust you, because hiring mm -hmm. a person is about trust, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Absol absolutely. Uh, it's in the end, it's about trust. It's 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 it's, it's people business. It's, it's it's nothing has changed, and uh, I'm sure nothing will change in the future. And this is, uh, of course, we have this. A global discussion uh, regarding artificial intelligence. It, of course, this is necessary because the technology, uh, yeah, let's call it, runs at a pace. Uh, yeah, we should uh, be aware of what can happen or what this technology can create, even by its own. Yeah, this is uh, what we should be aware about. And of course, we have this uh, ethics discussion. I'm not a professional in ethics, but uh, I know this is necessary because uh, with uh, opportunities, uh, we, we will also get challenges on the table and vice versa. So we have to uh, delve into these uh, discussions on a deeper level. Um, but uh, I'm not a professional in this field, but this is, this is necessary. On the other hand, we shouldn't be fearful of that the technology takes over everything. Again, common sense. Don't switch off your mind or don't switch off your brain or head, however you want to call it. Hey, common sense. Think about, think what you want, think what you can bring to the table, think what you want uh, to achieve as an individual in a company all together or with, with the stuff all together. There are so many things that uh, is yeah, it's driven by, by common sense. <laughs> and these questions, uh, each of one has uh, uh, to ask. Uh, we have to ask this uh, ourselves. <laughs> this We're going to title this talk, My Common Sense in the Digital Age. How about that? Because yeah. we it's lose it sometimes. Thing. Yep, yep, we lose <laughs> it. Thank you for reminding. Thank you. Hey, time is flying. Time is flying. I would love to continue this conversation maybe on the second episode at some point, Mike, but just be conscious of your time. Um, in conclusion, Okay, in conclusion, can we leave the audience with you with few takeaways? We talked about technology, we talked about organization and human mm -hmm. reaction to change. We talked about different leadership thinking, all right? And yeah. we ended up where again we should have started with common sense. So yeah. what kind of yeah, what kind of summary, what kind of few points you want to leave mm -hmm. the audience with? Oh no, you are challenging me. <laughs> exactly, that's what we hear. Oh, for. I don't have yeah. a, I don't have an artificial intelligence in my pocket. So okay, let's. Uh, we want let your intelligence, do... okay? No, artificial intelligence, my... we all have. Let... We really want your uh, your opinion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let me do my best. Either you are a leader or uh, a team member. Um, use the common sense um, by moving or driving things further regarding digital growth or personal growth or personal development. And by personal development, I mean this, what do I really want to achieve for me as an individual uh, from, from a business perspective and what I can bring uh, on a desk uh, when it comes to uh, I'm a member uh, or employee of a company. Um, and as a leader, um, get away from this fearful thinking. Um, move further, be a good role model lead by example and embrace this innovation and technology uh, and sometimes yes it is let's call it thin ice uh, and myself is is uh, sometimes also on thin ice but again we grow with uh, the challenges we have in front of us and uh, we can create amazing opportunities and uh, last but not least in any case what you do as a leader or um, as a team member, focus on the value creation. Anything else is a hobby when it comes to the business world. Wonderful, wonderful. I encourage everyone to follow Mike Flash everywhere on Twitter, on LinkedIn, because we just scratched the surface today. Okay, we just kind of laid the foundation. There is so much more behind what we spoke about. I'm a big fan of Mike's. Uh, I'm following, I'm reading all the all the wonderful, again, insights and industry news that Mike's is publishing. So please, please follow Mike. You will not regret it. And of course, Soga Talks is 
is here working for you. So give us some uploads, please, some likes, some comments, and maybe sharing, sharing with your audience, because I hope, I hope we are relevant to what you do and maybe giving you some inspiration with the talk we're having here. Mike, thank you so very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Irene. It was a pleasure.